used. Some of you may have, but because I've never used them, I want to get my fingers into them. And, um, not only to demonstrate them so that you can see them, but so I can see how they work. Because, you know, somebody always asks, does it this, does it that, or how does it compare to whatever? And I don't know, because I haven't used it. So let's try it out, and it's a good chance for you to see it at the same time. So the first thing that we're going to do is use the rice paper glue. That is a brand new glue. Um, actually, Stamperia has had rice paper glue in a little uh, a little bottle, a little tube-like bottle that is uh, plastic so you can squeeze it. Um, but that's really kind of awkward and not very conducive to decoupaging anything more than, you know, an inch or something. So I'm excited that they have changed it. Um, I think they changed the formula as well as the packaging. And now rice paper glue comes in a tub, like all of our other mediums from Stamperia. So I'm really excited because I do like most of their other mediums. So I've been waiting to try this out. <coughs> I'm waiting for y'all to see it while I do it. So I like for you to see it when I very first do it the first time. So you see what actually happens. You know, got your furniture back to usable status or are you happy in some corner? <laughs> um, yeah, yes and yes. <laughs> yes and yes. Um, I, I got... The desks, I got all the furniture, well, I got half the furniture moved. I'm going to have to take all the paper out of the other furniture in order to move it. That will not move with, with stuff in it, but um, I, I'll have to take all the paper out to move that. And But I did get the desks moved, and they were both piled high with stuff because as I organize, I go, oh, I can't let this get buried, and I set it on the desk, and pretty soon the desk is piled high. Buried. So it's buried on the desk. Buried, yeah, yeah, exactly. But at least I know it's on the desk. So I unburied this one desk. Um, the other one, eh, it's only half buried. I half unburied that. I decided by two o'clock it was time to go to bed. So, <laughs> so yeah. So I unburied this one, and it is perfectly ready for use. And I need to decide which one I'm going to do the lives from. And then the other one's going to be kind of behind me um, for other things. And I'm kind of thinking that this is going to be the one. So that's why I wanted to do that this today. And so, yeah. Um, all right. So I'm just going to start just like I would decoupage. And it's, it's, uh, it's thick. It's not a runny glue, but it's, oh, it's thin. It's no, it's consistency is ability to pick it up, but it's super thin. I like that. It needs to be thin to spread. Wow, that little bit that I got is spreading quite a ways. Um, if I'm decoupaging, I do want to make sure that it will spread a lot. I don't want big clumps. I just want a, a super thin layer down, and then I'll put the rice paper on top of it and then I'll put this over the top and I don't want to, I don't want a thick layer on top of it either. So, wow, that spread really nice and super thin and it looks like it will dry really quickly as well. So let's put the rice paper down. I am going to use the, let me see here. I'm, I'm still working on this camera. Make sure I'm actually in frame there. Um, I'm going to use this new one from Vintage Library. I love Vintage Library. This one is the library door. And I think it's the exact size it is, which means it should fit. It should lay down perfectly. I do like that I have the ability to pick it up and move it because it's hard to put an entire piece of paper down at once and have it perfectly lined up. Well, I feel like it should be the exact size. Maybe it's. Um, do you have letter size paper? Because that's an A4 size sheet. Of no, paper. no, it's just a hair off. And so I was thinking maybe I wasn't lined up, but it might just be a hair different. Okay. And is everybody familiar with rice paper? If you're not familiar with rice paper, 
couple things I'll tell you about it while doing this. Um, rice paper is pretty amazing. Uh, one of the things that you can do with it that you can't do with regular paper is fold it and bend it and crease it. And then when you lay it out and decoupage it down, those uh, folds are gone. They will not stay in. It, do it doesn't have memory in that way. It doesn't um, keep those. So let's get some glue on top. Rice paper glue on top of the rice paper. Let's see how this goes down. I'm going to need to turn down the sensitivity of your mic. Ah. I need to make a note of that for you because okay. Is it you can hear everything. Can you hear my fan? No, it's when you when you bump the table or brush oh. when you're brushing it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can hear it. Okay, give me a second. Let me see if I can do that just a bit. Okay. Let's try this. Tell me if it's any better and I can adjust it. I left it I left that setting open so I can adjust it as we go. If it's like you got air moving across it. Is it right in front of your mouth? Uh, no, it's on the other side of the table, okay. but, but the fan is not very far from it either. And I have a fan on high. I can turn it down. Yeah, but I'm not hearing it's not, it's not rhythmic like the fan. Okay. Is it the brush strokes? It could be, I don't know. I'm, I bet, I bet it's the fan and it just, it's not I mean, rhythmic like a fan though. It's, hmm. it's, it's like air is coming across the mic, but it's not rhythmic. That's Margie says she is rice paper. She has no memory either. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Now, I probably should have done this on regular cardstock first. Because I've never done I've never done it on this kind of paper. So I might have made a mistake. Yeah, it's a table when you're brushing. It's something's moving. It's not the fan. Okay. Okay, if I don't do anything, can you still hear it? No. Okay. So it's the movement of the table. Okay. So then either the other table needs to be the one that I do th things like this. Or you um, just need to adjust them. Set or, of them. You've got that mic that picks up everything you need to. Right. Okay, let me turn it down even farther. Turn it down. Okay, I just did. Yeah, but you're turning the volume down, not the sensitivity. You know what I mean? Yeah, hang on. It's picking up all the background noise. You need to make it so it's more focused. We just need to go in and play with them settings again because we had it. Remember, we had to do it that one time? Right. And now that you move, we probably need to go back in and do it again. Yeah, it's not a fan sound. It's a. Okay. It's when she's banging the table or. Yeah, now I got an echo. Okay, so let's see. This well, it was her echoing, Angela. It's it's her. It was her echoing. Okay, yeah, and I took that. I was playing with the settings a little bit. I put that back on. Yeah. So, so the ones I'm using uh, here. Go ahead. J Mac asked, "Do you think the rice paper glue will eliminate?" The creases and leave us with a matte finish. Is it a matte finish glue? It is a matte finish glue, and it doesn't matter what glue you use. There are no creases with rice paper. Your glue will take the creases right out, and that that was what I started to tell you was it doesn't matter if you crease your rice paper, if you fold it, if you crumple it all up like this, <laughs> if you lay it down and then you glue across the top and spread it out, you're all of your, <coughs> all of your um, folds will be gone. Rice paper doesn't have memory to hold those unless you want it to. And then you kind of scrunch it up and keep it there purposefully. So the pack mm. that I'm pulling these from, we will show you, but this is part of the new a vintage library. I love this one, World of Books. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I love the little town of books. I want to live in the library shop. And so that was the library door. And I'm going to take this one, which is a blue damask background. I'm going to put this one onto 
this tag and see how it <laughs> goes to this tag. Um, that my microphone needs to not be attached to the table. Yeah. But to stand. That's what I'm thinking. Drop it down from the seat. Yeah. That's mine. That's why I moved mine because it kept every time the table would jostle, it hear the pen move or something. Yeah. I'm gonna turn this over because I'd really like to get it get that edge. I love that old edge on there. I want to get it right to the edge. It's easier to see it this way. There we go. And he says she likes the crinkles. <laughs> yeah, it depends what I'm doing, uh, yeah. but I do. Yeah, sometimes we do that purposely. We'll use tissue paper or rice paper. And, oh, I know there's also, I have one of those three-tiered things on here that's not going to stay, and it jostles. I yeah. heard it. Um, yep, I can hear that. Okay, sorry about that. Testing out new setup here, but um, I will remove that for next time because it's not going to stay here anyway. Just don't and, want, want you, and once you get done, we just need to do that mic again. Yeah. So okay. we did that the first time. You had to go through and do your focus settings on and all that stuff, remember? Yep. That's true. <laughs> Margie said she was rice paper. I was being silly and eliminating wrinkles, J Mac said. I like wrinkles. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you meant if it will eliminate wrinkles and crinkles on you. <laughs> I don't know. Let me try. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. So typically, um, you know, I, I did this right to the edge because I wanted this cool edge over here. But typically, I would tear the rice paper slightly smaller than the tag. And so then I can decoupage it right on and it kind of blends in. I'm going to let it dry and then I'll just cut that. So the yeah, they're asking if you can see the brush strokes, but okay. we'll have to wait till it dries to we'll make have sure. To wait till it dries and see. This one's drying. Where it's dry, I cannot. Where it's not dry, I still can. So we got to give it uh, time to dry. I can see as it dries, when it's completely dry, that the brush strokes go away. I don't think I got it wet enough on the bottom. This is a really thick paper, so. Let's see, getting some underneath it there in the corner. Yeah, I can tell where it's still wet. I can see the brush strokes, but where it's dry, like on these books, I cannot. On these books. So let's let that completely dry. What? Marty says she doesn't hear anything except you talking. She must have selective hearing from her hubster. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Margie. <laughs> Always it's all the time. It's just sometimes when she's when the table moves, you can hear it. Yeah. And on a phone, you might not be able to hear it, you know, because the phone doesn't pick up some of the lower. And DM says the camera is wiggly, and that's because the it, the whole thing. Yeah, she got happening. it on the table. So. Yeah. So if I if I take that off of the desk and have it attached to the ceiling or another stand or out of the wall that will take care of that so i'm going to grab some scissors hi elisa i see that elisa can says she hears sensitivity goes up she hears feedback through my sound well my sound's not changing jen so if it's my sound you'd, it'd be the same no matter what hmm She's on. Uh, yeah, this is uh, on a phone. It's going to be so different. Yeah, there's are, lots of can here on the phone. Are you hearing it when Candy talks, but not when Candy doesn't talk? Is that what you mean by that? Okay, so I really love this vintage library, and I know you're anxious to see it, and we are going to show it to you today. And I wanted to use some of those rice papers. That is really pretty. I can see where it's drying. I do not see brush strokes. Where it's still wet, I still see the brush strokes. So let's give it a chance to, to completely dry there. Um, let me do this for a minute so I don't just stick something in there. Let's go back to this one. Okay, this one is dry, still drying. Um, it's still wet the last places that I touched. But where it's dry, 
I do not see brush strokes at all. That is really cool. Now, wouldn't this make a really cool um, cover? That door right there? Yeah. Love that. Okay. So, I'm going to say, uh, have you tried your rice paper glue? I don't have it yet. Oh, that's right. Sorry. I was thinking. Well, I'm not doing this. That's why you're on full screen because I don't have the rice paper. I'm thinking that you already had it. I um, I know we weren't a huge fan of the rice paper glue in the little squeeze bottle. And that's why I never brought it out. Yeah, no. I didn't like it. I have that. Yeah. So um, I am a fan of this. I do like this. Is it the same consistency as what was in the bottle or is it um, a little thicker? I think it's a little thicker. Okay. And it spreads. It, it's thicker as in like whipped cream holds up, seems thicker, but when you spread yeah. it, it's super thin, spreads super yeah. thin. Yeah, so it's not thick consistency, but it's more sturdy, Is that, I don't know, sturdy consistency. Um, I like it, I like it a lot. I can see this drying. Yeah. It's drying quickly too. I'm able to touch it right away, and I can tell it's not dry in certain places, but it's not like that, um, especially sometimes with collage gel, when I touch it, even if it's still damp, then my finger sticks to it and it pulls the rice paper up in that area or the napkin. And that yeah. I don't like. Ah, I was going to try it with napkin. Let me do that. Let me grab napkin. We got to try all the ways. There's <laughs> napkin. There's a piece of napkin. Oh, that's a pretty one. Yeah. Got a, the little tag. We'll do that on the little tag. I'm going to glue the tag to the table. That's what I'm going to end up doing to the mat. Let's see. Yeah, I'm hoping. It's, I think that's all. That's only one layer. Oh, nope, it is two. I knew I pulled one layer off. I couldn't remember if I pulled the second layer off the whole thing or just the piece I was using. Okay. And I already put that in water, so I'll grab an art towel. Get the water out. And I chose to use this brush, this Tim Holtz Distress Brush, because this brush tends to give more um, lines I got glue on there. There's going to be a little texture. This tends to give more texture lines. So I thought if I don't see the brush strokes with this, then any brush will be great. So when you want some texture lines, this is a great brush to use. <laughs> they said they can hear your fan, but they don't, they don't care about that. It's not bad. <laughs> Mark says, we don't want you erupting into flames from the heat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry. I won't. I'm going to put this. I think I want this little border down here on the bottom. That's really pretty. All right. It's easier to turn it over when I'm doing the whole thing. I'm not used to doing the whole thing. Usually part of the Ted says you're on fire with his napkin peeling. <laughs> <laughs> this girl is on fire. <laughs> and she erupts into flames. No, I can totally turn that down. It's actually a little chilly. I had it on last night because I was pushing furniture. Yeah, I, don't hear that. I don't hear that that bad. You don't? That's, they hear no. it. Uh -uh. I mean, I hear it, but it's not, yeah. it's not, not bad. That is the bumping of the table, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's two fans in here, so it's it's totally fine. The rhythmic I can handle. It's the it's the odd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the oddballs. Oh, that's totally that tin um, or galvanized metal tiered tray holding supplies. I, I hear it bumping and yeah. things inside of it rattling. Sometimes. Very, very much so. Marty says, at least you aren't in flames like the hotel. Right, ladies? <laughs> yeah, just keep them all in there, Marty. Keep them all in there. <laughs> oh, thanks, Margie. Thanks for bringing that up all again. Right. <laughs> Jane Max said, Jen, a friend has named her autocorrect, autocorrect auto. I call him mayhem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I don't know that there's any insurance for 
uh, autocorrect mayhem. <laughs> and don't forget thumbs up, ladies. I know they said oh, it earlier. But I forgot to read it. You. Sorry. Okay, so this is just um, a lightweight tag, and so oops, I tore that a little too tight. Well, that's okay. Then I need to tear some others a little too tight so that we get not edges on everything. I'm gonna do that. So when you, if you are cutting rice paper down to use just a piece of it, you're not gonna use, cover the whole tag like this. You're just gonna cover some of it. Don't cut it, you wanna tear it. I'll do one like that too. Just All right, so let's see how this dries up. Still, I like that I'm able to touch it and it's not, um, lifting up unless I'm pulling it up on purpose. It's not lifting up and like sticking to my hands as badly as, as regular collage gel does. Let's let that dry for a minute. But what I want to show you, but just those who may, if you haven't used rice paper before, let's say you're doing a, a tag and you want some of this on it. You don't want the whole thing covered. You just want to get a little bit of background started. You want to tear, this is a napkin, but let's do this. Not that one. I was going to say, <laughs> that's the wrong one to tear. I'm going to tear the letters. This one is letters. Okay. This is a, this is a good one. So we can tear, um, I wouldn't cut, um, I wouldn't cut out a letter because then you see that little square glued on there, all cut out. Napkin is the same way as rice, uh, the same as rice paper in this regard, but you just want to tear out, tear whatever you want. And the reason is because there's so many fibers in here that when you tear it, is that super bad crinkly? <laughs> it's the microphone. Okay. When you tear it, you get all the little fiber edges and... Jen, Jen said mayhem is what happens at her craft tables. Mayhem, <laughs> mayhem is my fiendish friend, unlike Otto. <laughs> oh, well, then you'll fit right in it at retreat. Mayhem happens at retreat. <laughs> so when you tear it, you've got all these odd edges with the fibers sticking out. Then when you decoupage it on, then those fibers blend in better. Uh, if you have cut edges, you're going to end up with cut edges. In fact, I'm going to let that just go over the edge right there. You're going to end up with a cut edge straight look, and that's not really probably. I mean, if that's what you want, then that's what you want to do. But if, the, if that's not what you want, you want it to blend better, then you want to just tear it because the edges will just blend right in. Now, this is stark white, so normally I would have already done some inking, maybe some stenciling. I'll probably just do the stenciling over the top of it since I didn't already there. And maybe I'm going to do a little piece up here. The worst part is these edges here, those are just like if you cut it with scissors. So if you put, if I do this, I'm going to have straight edge, straight edge, which is going to be a very harsh edge and then a very soft blend over here. So either I'm going to put it where those two go off the edge and so I don't have to tear them or I come over here and I tear just the, the edge off so I get that um, torn edge so it will blend. So I'll do it on the top one and then I'm going to put it over here. Jen says, oh my god, the crinkly sound. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Love the crinkly sound. <laughs> hey, Max, she loves the demos. Saves a lot of first time mess ups. Oh, good. Thank you for that feedback, J Mac, because I've yeah, wondered. You know, crinkly papers are my favorite. Yeah. And it is hard. Yeah, I love crinkly papers. <laughs> it is hard when we bring out new products and you're looking at it and thinking, mm, it looks awesome, but do I really know how to use it? Or are there things that, you know, I'm going to use it five times and then I'm going to learn. Now, I didn't tear that edge and that's because I let it go over the edge. So when it's all dry, I'll just cut that off. So it looks like it just faded off into that one as well. So I didn't worry about that edge. So that just starts a background, but see how nicely it just kind of blends in here. You don't really, you don't see a straight edge because you tear it. Same thing with napkins. And if you do, uh, I have one more. I think I do. I do. If you take your napkin and you just 
Wow, that's really pretty. Just, you know, tear a piece of what you want. And you can put parts and pieces everywhere or anywhere. So you can cover that whole little, little bit of that. Now napkin, if I don't want those, I, I picked it up a little bit before I got it wet so I could lay it, lay it straight. Uh, otherwise, I will be... Lucy's come in. Afternoon, Lucy. Hey, Lucy. Good to see you. Okay. And then let's go down here and just give a little bit. Penny says it's like her torn around the edges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kind of like all of us at this age, right? Do a little bit down here. Oh, Lucy says you can have more precise torn edges by using your ruler and wet paintbrush. You can, you can more precise and, but still get that torn edge um, look. And lo a lot of times if I have the torn edge, I, I don't really want it to be precise and I'm going to layer, you know, I, this is obviously now the base of a, a tag that I'm going to, to layer on. Um, but sometimes I'll start by doing the whole thing and then I can come in on that. Who? I'm sorry. Elisa. Hi, Elisa. Oh, Elisa was here before. Oh, was she? Yeah, I saw a comment from her. That's why I said hi, Elisa. Okay, I missed it. <laughs> I thought it was just me. Well, maybe she went out and came back again. Or maybe I saw the wrong just... Hi, Elisa. Good morning. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so what Lucy's talking about, and this is um, another way that you can tear, air quotes, those edges is by using a paintbrush and water. Um, we, we can't do too much off the cuff today because everything is still <laughs> up in arms in this room except this desk. So uh, those of you who don't know, I'm moving all of the furniture around again, reorganizing. Sandy, that has come in. <laughs> so, Sandy's finally made it. She made it. She finally wake up, woman. <laughs> <laughs> so you can either use a water brush doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. It's just a, paint, a paintbrush and water. But say I wanted to get this uh, paisley out here, then you just kind of do the water around, how far, however far you want around it. Uh -oh. I don't know if you're freezing or I'm freezing. <laughs> uh oh, did I freeze? Yeah. It looks like I'm still going. Well, yeah, I came back, but oh, I don't know if it was you or me. <laughs> My Maybe it was you because my YouTube hasn't frozen. And then you can just really easily tear it where you um, did the water. So if you want to make sure that you don't, that you get it torn where you want. If you're like, I want to get that whole paisley in there. And, you know, knowing me, I go tear it and I'm going to tear right through it. Then just make a little water line around it. And you can tear it exactly where you want. And then when you get that, if you say, okay, well, I don't want that. Let me stick it in the glue. I don't want this here, so let me go ahead and, and get that off. Didn't need to saturate it with water. Just a little bit will do. Um, <laughs> you could even bring these in tighter here. You could bring this in tighter here. Just put a little bit of water, and it comes right off like that. So that's an easy way. That's what Lucy was talking about. Um, super easy way. And it works with either a paintbrush and water or your water brush. Either. Toby. Say that again. Toby, come in. Hi, Toby. Okay, so that is drying. I, I'm liking that on the napkin. It's got a really nice finish. It's a it's a very matte finish. Um, I feel like I could stamp on it and do other things on it. Where sometimes you feel like there's like a glossy surface that is not going to take, you know, other mediums or media on it. This feels very matte, and it looks very matte. It just looks like the napkin all by itself stuck to the paper, which is actually kind of cool. Yeah, I see absolutely no evidence of a medium on it at all, and that I really like. Okay, this one is all dry. Where, where we were seeing brush strokes, that is gone. Even the corners, the last thing that I got really wet, the brush strokes are gone. Okay, oh, that's cool. I like it. So, all right, my vote is thumbs up on the rice paper glue in the tub. The new rice paper glue in the tub. And I would call it rice and napkin glue. 
<laughs> that's what I'm going to call it because that's what I'll use it for. Yeah, I'm liking it. Okay, so now I need to, that just looks weird to me because I wouldn't have put it on white. I would have done some background stenciling, got some color in there, but I'll fix it up. I will fix it up. Look at that. Nice and matte. That's very cool. I am liking it. The edges are awesome. Even where I had got some out here on the paper, you cannot tell where that where I got the glue and where there wasn't any at all. It feels exactly the same. And I can't see the line. I can't see where I got it and where I didn't. That makes me happy because usually I can see a glue line and know that I went out to there. Okay, so let's put that one up there. So we're going to demonstrate a couple of products. And then before we do the sale, and the, so the rice paper glue is the first one. And I like that. Adobe says you don't prime your bases. You just start right in with the glue and putting your pieces down. Uh, yep, absolutely. I put a little bit of glue. I put a little bit of glue on the base, a little bit of the rice paper glue on the base, just a little bit. So, okay, hang on. This is probably going to shake. Um, so I'm going to get all this glue off now. And then I laid my paper down and put it on top. Oh, yeah, that whole metal thing is shaking. Not good. I'm trying not to rub hard. Hmm? Um, yeah, somewhere. It would come off easily, but I don't want to. <coughs> I want to do this because it comes right. <laughs> when you do this on the, on the Glassboard Studios mat, it just comes right up. But that's going to make that thing shake a whole lot, so. Um, maybe I'll just give it a little bit of water. It'll help it come up. Trying not to hurt your ears. That's what I'm trying not to do. Margie says, oh, yeah. I, you don't even need it with this. It comes up with a baby wipe. I just, you know, have to rub it. It's like rubbing glue off of your fingers. You know how it just rolls up? I love this mat. That It just rolls up off the mat like that. But you do this with your fingers to get that. Sorry about that light. I hate when that light line to. Um, you do this to get the glue off your fingers and it just rolls up. It's the same thing on this mat. When I do that, it just rolls up, but that's what makes all the noises when I do that. So trying not to do that. And said you could put some burgundy color in those white spaces on the tags and use that Whoa. as a base for it, something else. So that's good that enough. would be pretty. Yeah, I'll probably pull out a stencil and do some inking on that. Um, on both of those, on all of them actually. But a lot of times I'll start with some ink and a stencil first, get a little bit of base background, and then do the some napkin or rice paper on top of it, and then go from there. But it's okay. We wanted to see how it went directly on the paper without ink, because that could affect it, and then it wouldn't have been a true test of how it holds on the paper. So, okay, so the second thing we're going to try... I'm also very excited about because I have not tried it at all. I've had it. Candy has tried it a little bit because she got hers at retreat. Um, but I did not open mine. And so I have, excuse the reach here. I have not tried it at all. This is the Simon Hurley stamping foam. And there are, I have three different sizes. They can always come in a pack of two. And this one is, I think it's four and a quarter by five. Is that right? Um, four and a quarter by five and three quarters. Four and a quarter by five and three quarters. They're two large blocks. And then this one has a circle cut out. You can see the circle. Both of them do. Think of all the cool things you could do with that. This circle is perfect for making um, stamps onto your paper or onto anything and getting a perfectly circular image without trying to cut out a template that you can then stamp and make sure it stays within that circle. You can do it right with that. And then with the outside, you can stamp perfectly circular frames and do other things inside of them. Or if you put down rice paper and you want to highlight something, you can stamp around it, things like that. The third set that I have is three by four and a quarter. And so that is like one of these cut in half. And so 
there's four in this set, three by four and a quarter. So we have a few of those for the sale. So we want to try them out. I have not even opened my bag. I took the, I took the label off, but I haven't even opened the bag. Okay. Have you guys all seen these? Um, <laughs> you love the crinkle. Crinkle, crinkle, crinkle. <laughs> Crinkly paper, that's the best. Have you seen these stamping foams? Okay, so the idea, Simon says, Simon says, is that you warm up the foam, you heat up the foam. I'm going to get it started because it's quiet. So I'm going to use the Ranger heat tool because this is a Ranger product. So I'm assuming that the Ranger heat tool should be hot enough to do it. Is that what you use, Candy, or do you use something else? Uh, yeah, I use that. Okay. And I don't know exactly how long I'm supposed to heat it up, but I'm going to heat it up. Talk, press this foam into anything with texture on it and create your own stamp. <laughs> okay. Jen asked about crap glass board studio. So I put that link in there. So, don't order directly from them. You'll pay regular retail, but message me, Jen. I do have an account with them where I can get us, um, get a good discount. She gets like 15, 20%. Yeah. I was giving, uh, right, you can get 10% on the website, but she gets you more. You get 10 on the website, but we get 18 or 20. Yeah. It's close. Which is, um, and they're magnetic mats too. They're magnetic. Glass mats. Is, yeah. So they come with these super strong. Well, they don't come with, you have to buy these separately. Super strong magnets and they hold everything down and i don't know how long to let's just try it right there um and the mat comes in all different sizes i got this big one because <coughs> i wanted to be my whole so this is a 3d embossing folder and i don't know which side or if i can do it on both sides so i'm going to try one and then the other so i'm going to put it on this side and then i'm going to press it down while it was warm again things are rattling on my desk I don't know if I had it warm enough. Do you know how long you had you had to heat yours? Um, I don't remember. Yeah. Did you? I maybe I could have touched it to see if it had. <laughs> oh, cool! I didn't press very hard over here. I can see, but can, okay. So there's my imprint, and I did it on this side. So I'm going to remember that I did it on that side. All right. So now. They're about the same price as Tim Holtz. Actually, I think they're a little bit cheaper when you go size by size. What? These mats, the glass mat. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. They yeah. clean easier than the Tim Holtz. They clean a lot easier. Yeah. Um, they, they, uh, they look a lot the same. They really do look a lot alike. But, yeah, what I was saying before, what we found the first time we used them, we found this, that um, we could just take a, wet, a baby wipe and rub everything like that. I don't want to do it because then you hear my, everything rattle. Um, and, it, and it just rolled up like glue rolling off your fingers. And that was very cool. I love the way it did that. Yeah, I feel like it's not very deep or it's kind of deep over here, but not over here. So maybe I didn't press it down so well. So I'm going to, I'm going to heat it again and re redo it. So got this stamped image. I don't like it. I want to redo it. So all you do is heat it again. And that image is supposed to come out and come right back to the stamping block so that you can then use it again. And so the idea of this is instead of buying a bunch of stamps of texture of it, or it's not really not buying texture stamps. It's, it's being able to get textures that you can't get in stamps. Maybe you have some cool wallpaper. Maybe you have a cool uh, plate that has dimension on it and you like that design. You could press this into it and get that design. There we go. So we heated it and, and it turned right back to, heated it, popped right back up to full size. So, okay, I'm gonna heat it a little bit more because I don't know how much I'm supposed to heat it, but I think I want it to be nice and flexible. Even if you stick your thumb in it, then you can keep heating it and the thumbprint comes right back out. 
But you could do that. You could put your child's hand in it or your grandchild's hand in it or your hand in it and make um, a, an imprint, a stamp of the negative. Okay, so I'm going to get this ready again. And make sure I have this nice and hot. I, I may be heating it way longer than I need to. I just don't even know how long you're supposed to eat it. But let's see if this works. Okay, press it down. Make sure I press all sides all the way around. You sound like you're sanding. I'm just wiping it off. Okay, there we go. That's a pretty decent impression. Okay, <clears throat> so I don't have these in stock in the store yet. Um, I have a, a demo to play with, and then I have only one of each one, and it, we didn't intend to sell them, so I didn't look them up. But I'm going to use Simon Hurley inks. Again, um, I just opened this. Uh, I typically will only buy one or minimum, like this one. You have to buy them in a minimum of three. I'll only buy the minimum so I can try them to see if we're going to like them. Is that side got a sticker on it or something? It's not coming open. Wow. All right, that is. Uh, mine opened right up, so I don't know what you. I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> yeah, what your problem is. <laughs> that side is like stuck over there. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Stick my fingernail down in it. Oh, it's like the plastic isn't cut all the way. Well, how can it not be? Literally, it's like the plastic is adhered together. That's really weird. Let's tie this one. Okay, that one came right off. All right, so we'll try the purple one. So I haven't used these, but I'm going to just rub it across because it's a big, pretty big stamp, pretty big block. So easiest way to get lots of ink on it is just rub it right across. Okay. And then I'm going to stamp the image. I think my chat froze. I think my stream yard chat froze. Either that or everybody's crafting. Nobody's chatting. Okay. Um, Last thing I see is at 1032. And that's weird. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay, duly impressed. <laughs> wow. Um, Margie said, pure stamping is going out. Everything is now mixing media and grunge. Yeah. And Jen said, well, I can understand that. I don't like stamping by itself too restrictive, but I do like stamping, using them or pieces of them as elements. Yeah. Well, you know, I think all the th same things that we you can do with these with mixed media, you could do with just still stamping if you wanted to, Margie. But I know what you're saying. For the people, original stampers, who made cards and scrapbooks and things. Uh, everything is is evolving. I wow, I'm pretty impressed with that. Look how cool that is. That's a pretty clean stamp, especially for my first time. That's awesome. She didn't bring these to retreat, but as I had already bought one. Yeah, I did not bring them to retreat. She bought one, so I bought um, an extra. A uh, few because I wanted to try it, and then I brought bought an extra few that I thought if if I like it I'll bring it to, uh, to the sale. But uh, yeah, I did not put them out for sale at retreat. Those of you who wonder when you come to retreat, you get um the retreaters discount on anything in the shop, and so there was a lot of stuff for them to shop through, and that's why Glennis is like, wait, I didn't see those. <laughs> okay, my chat. I'm gonna flip to private chat and come back to comments because it's not. The la wow, my chat is uh, frozen. It stopped at 1032. Oh, no. My stream yard itself isn't. It's fine. So, okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, I gave them in. She said it'd be good for reverse stamping. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, I, wow. 
I really am impressed. I have to tell you, I really am. Here, no, I don't want to do that one. That blew all over it. Let's get another one. A fresh baby wipe. You're supposed to be able to wipe your ink right off of it. Ooh, look at that. That is some rich purple right there. I'm going to hold it up so it doesn't shake the table. <clears throat> Wow. Okay, I'm actually pretty impressed with how the ink is coming off. I'm just making sure. Uh, and now I'm going to spread all the ink that's on my baby wipe. And just now she has to fight the need for one. They're awesome. Oh my goodness. I took the ink off and the imprint is still there. So I could ink up another color and do that. But it stays in there until you need it. But yeah. So if you wanted to leave one for a while, you could just imprint it, leave it sit there. And I'm thinking I could probably, I wonder if I heat it from the back if that imprint will come out. So could I could I do a different imprint in the back? You know, if I wanted to keep one there for a while. Yeah, you can. You can. Okay. So I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do the other side of the embossing folder. So we get the positive and the negative. Let's see how quickly it comes out of here. She used a 3D embossing folder, Jen, to stamp that to yep. make um, the image. I was gonna grab a regular embossing folder, but I grabbed a couple they of They don't make they don't make it as deep. I mean it doesn't yeah. get as good of an impression. Okay. But is it deep enough to stamp? Yeah, it is, but you get more of a negative look. Okay. I got a couple other things though that I wanted to try. <coughs> the more things I can do with a product, the more I'm inclined to buy it because, yeah, I really I love this. Glue sticks in it to make a moon. Hmm? She used glue sticks to make a moon. Oh. Oh. To make That's shapes a, in it. Yeah. That's a cool idea. Oh, I'm still just doing this, and it's actually already come back out. Oh, there's a little bit right there. Let me heat that area. Um, you can burn that so I wouldn't get it too close. Okay. All right. I, think I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for telling me. I'll stay back here to get those two corners. So, well, and I was using a heat tool. Oh, so it, that, so, yeah. Yeah, the industrial strength. <laughs> well, mine's not as high. Okay. Hurt, so I'm going to go. I did this side. I'm going to do this side. Yeah, Jen says she likes the dimensional image because a bit of random because it makes it imperfect. Yes. Yes. Now I'm seeing if I can do the whole block perfectly, but if I was actually using it on, um, oh, this color, this color might be good on this. Um, we'll, tr we'll try that in a minute. Sorry about that. Okay. I don't even know. I, does it like cool immediately? So I didn't get very deep up here. I'm going to try that side again. This side might not get as deep because. Practice. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. It this is the first time I've ever done it. So I want you to see how it is <laughs> from the very beginning. And this, this makes side. your negative image on the other side. Okay. Guaranteed. Simon did this a whole bunch of times before he ever got on recording and, and did a tutorial, you know? No, Penny, I haven't seen Charlie. They've, um, since we got back, they, they, and they just left and went out of town. So he's been, okay. They, they took him to urgent care yesterday because he had a bug bite they had a reaction to or something. So it's better today though. Oh, good. Yeah. The Benadryl and the, the yeah. trying to make only get help. Yeah, it cools off quickly. It cools yeah. off real quick. I mean, so. So if it's a big image, I'm trying to press it quickly. Um, maybe it would even help if I just had something flat. Like a a rolling, you know, like a rolling pin? Yeah. If I had a book and I could just press the whole thing. Yeah. Down. Yeah. That would um, probably help really if you're doing a big image like that. Quick yeah. all over the place and not missing those corners. 
Okay, that's pretty good. Let's try this. Um, do we want gears on that? Now let's do something else on that. But let's do, let's try this color. Is that, what else do we have here? We only, okay, here's the other cool thing. And this is why I wanted to try the Simon Hurley inks is that his ink colors match the lunar paste. We love our lunar paste. So I'm gonna do some of that on here. So this is Bee Sting, which is the closest to red of lunar paste there is. And you could get just a little bit or you can keep going over it and get a lot. Uh, when it's a big image like this, I would just roll the, the ink right over the top of it because you can spray it with water to get the water drop image. It yeah. helps the ink release better too. Now I don't really want to pull them like that. I don't like these edges, so I'm going to have to do something to cover all those. Spray it with water. Missed it with water. It's not going to take care of this straight line. All right, these are water based, so that, but they're not distressed like that kind of water reactive. Oh, that is not a mist. Good grief. Oh, I hate when sprayers go out. It's mist. Let me see if this one will mist. Both of these sprayers are going. Time for me to use the new one we got at Retreat. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so it actually did help a little bit on that line. I can I could rub it a bit and get that line to Oh buttons in it would be cool. Oh uh, buttons would be cool. Yeah, if I rub that I could get uh this one I got the line to smush a little bit. Okay, so it's a little bit start of a background. I need to go in there. I need some some vintage photo or some something dark, something. And they want to try the non-traditional thing with it. A little more grungy. Okay. So we know Netting. it works with embossing folders. Flowers, wrought iron fencing. Ooh, that sounds cool. I hadn't thought about flowers. Um, if I was doing flowers. <laughs> if I were at a bee sting that looked that color, I'd go to urgent care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Um, if I was doing flowers, I would probably either set the flowers on a piece of paper and set this down and then push a book on it flat uh, because I mean, flowers are, I, it depends on the flower though. You may not get a very deep impression or even put it on a, um, a stamping platform and then not, I wouldn't put the platform. The problem is inking you're going to get a negative impression and then you're only inking the outside of the flower. Right. So if you're, if you get the negative impression and you're inking the outside, then you're going to need to go in a watercolor or something. Yeah. Oh, inside. So if you just want the outside, a nice soft outside of the flower and not the whole inside. So you can watercolor. That's actually a pretty cool idea. Okay. So we got that red off. Okay, so what I want to try now, these are old um, Spellbinders texture plates, and they've got some cool textures on them, and I'm thinking that texture might... Yeah, you could do that. You could do the... You could do the negative impression with a 3D embossing folder, the negative impression on one side, and the raised impression on the other one. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, let me get this out here. And then the thing I had was this stencil that has script writing on it. I really want to try that. Now, these are thick enough you can put two designs at the same time on the back and the front. Yeah, they're um, a good inch. Oh, no, not quite. Three quarters. More. They're a little more than three quarters of an yeah. inch. You can get two images and it doesn't. Not quite an inch, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure that the only difficulty would be pressing on the one side. But if it's not hot, then it's not going to press. It shouldn't press it out anyway. So, 
but that's again if i was doing that i would definitely put something flat over it like a a, a book or a piece of hard plastic or something and press it all at once because that even pressure is going to be less likely to disturb your stamped image on top. Okay, so I'm gonna try the texture plates first. I'm gonna put it over both of these and see if I can get half of one and half of the other. Again, I don't really know how to put slim designs on the narrow side. <laughs> you could put borders. You could do borders on the sides. That's a good idea, actually. Okay, so this is going straight onto metal texture plates, which would be um, similar to the letterpress plates. I don't know what happened to my chat. I could refresh, but then it will knock me out for a few seconds. Oh, look at, oh, I didn't press right there very well. That looks cool over here and over there. I didn't press right there very well. Yeah. Right there. Okay. So I'm going to try, it. I'm going to try it anyway. Well, I can see it. Oh, huh. I didn't press right there very well either. Positive on the second block, press to the first block. Ooh, I don't know you'd be able to do that. You do it with your embossing folders, but I don't know if you can do it from block to block. What is that? I can't or see. You eat up one block and then put uh -huh. the oh the block to the other block to get yeah. from a negative to a positive. Well, if it's yeah, an embossing, I don't know you can be able to do that. Side, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that they're deep enough to make that imprint on the other block. Yeah. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, I don't. It's surprised me. They're deep enough to make a nice uh, stamp, but I don't know if it's deep enough to imprint on the other side. Okay. It's pretty big. Um, I feel I, I'm going to, I will, maybe I'll just use this embossing plate on top of it. I still think something flat, giving you full pressure over the whole thing, would be easier and would give better coverage. But I'm going to try this slippery one wet, which is a gold. I think that these flowers would be really pretty on here. Oh, it's kind of light compared to this. It needs a darker one. It, and I only ordered these few colors, so it, but it does need something darker, something brown even. That's not enough, enough to um, even see. Let's see. Okay. Oh, wow. That gave a really nice imprint. Okay, here's the funny part. There are a couple spots where I thought I didn't press really well because it didn't seem to be um, very deep, but it's actually a good print all the way around. The ink isn't as dark here. I didn't press as hard right there, but the, the print, the image itself is everywhere. That's, that's pretty awesome. 